Welcome to Light Tackle Week. This week, uh, we're going to be dropping videos every day um, with some start cast, uh, covering pretty much everything you need to know about light tackle fishing here in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, this is going to be leading up to our sales event here uh, coming up April 13th. Uh, to check out all the details for our uh, sales event, make sure you log in to EnglishSnapples.com. There's going to be full details on all our sale items there. And today we're with Lenny here from Fish Talk Magazine, and we're going to be covering some awesome stuff about light tackle fishing for cutlass fish. Yes, so cutlass fish. I know a lot of guys might not even know what a cut what a <laughs> cutlass fish is, but they're really cool. I love these things. Some people oh, yeah. call them ribbon fish. Yep, of course. And they're really sort of a new option. Oh, yeah. We, and they're really weird looking. They are really weird looking. They look like <laughs> a giant, long, flat silver eel with crazy dragon teeth. Yes. Right? Do keep your fingers away from those teeth, people, because they will hurt you. But they are super cool fish. You wouldn't think it from their, their mm -hmm. shape and their appearance, but they're great to eat. They're actually pretty easy to fillet. You just whoosh, run, run the knife right down them. And, uh, you know, who can predict what's going to happen in the summertime, right? right? I mean, that's months away. But we've got a four or five year trend going here where we're just seeing more and more in the Chesapeake, in Maryland waters. And, yeah. you know, previous to that, I don't ever remember hearing about any of them being in Maryland. Nope. So it's really super cool. It's a totally new thing. Uh, last year, they were thickest in my neck of the woods through the month of August, but I know they were getting them in July down towards Salmons. Mm -hmm. um, they were getting them there again in September. They were getting some on the east side uh, throughout the summer months. So it's a really cool thing to target. Uh, and, you know, I know this is Light Tackle Week, and I thank right. you guys for doing Light Tackle, but I grabbed this just to remind everybody that a lot of folks have been trolling stuff like this, standard mackerel gear with a, with a planer on it, and all that Michigas to get these cutlass fish because they do often hit little spoons like these guys when you're trolling these for mackerel. Yeah. And that's kind of how a lot of people have discovered them. They've been looking for mackerel and pulled up cutlass fish and gone, what are these crazy things, right? Uh, but you don't need to use this stuff. You can totally make this a light tackle fishery. And they're, they fight really good for a light tackle fish. I mean, I know me and you have caught them before and you know, that hit is noticeably hard when those things hit. They smack it and, and, and then it gets weird, mm -hmm. right? Then it gets weird. These fish actually swim backwards and they're so long and skinny and paper thin that when they stop swimming backwards, you think you lost them. Right. And a lot of times people will stop reeling. Oh, shucks, the hook pulled. No, no, no. Reel, reel, reel. And then all of a sudden they'll start tugging again. Mm -hmm. It really, it's a wacky fight, but it, you know, it's so unusual. It's so different. I, I just absolutely love it. So should we talk about the gear that's yep. good for them? So standard issue, light tackle spinning rig, 3000 reel, 15, 20 pound braid. Um, now this is on here for rockfish and the cutlass fish absolutely will hit lures like this. But you know what happens when they do? Yep, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> right there. They do that even it's faster like a blue than fish, I right? do Yes. Uh, you, you will not catch many cutlass fish throwing this guy unless you bring like 50 tails with you mm -hmm. for a day of fishing. So, what are you gonna use? It's very simple. Plugs really do the trick. The gotcha is sort of an old time favorite for them up and down the coast in areas where they've always had them. Mm -hmm. Works just fine. This is a great lure for casting and retrieving. Uh, another lure that works really well is a cool. little rattle Classic trap. There. Yep, just about either size like that works out really well. And what I really like about these, and, and when I go out and target them, I'll normally rig up you know, at least four rods with these guys mm -hmm. and throw them out and I'll super slow troll them until I catch a fish, and then reel in all the other lines and start casting and retrieving them. Nice, that's um, smart. Yeah, and then you can really get on them. These troll really, really well. You wanna to remember, to look at that rod tip. This light little rod, what's this, a medium action here? That's a medium, seven foot medium, yep. Right, and, and this tip will just constantly do this with one of those lures swimming behind the boat. So as long as it's doing that, you're good to go. If it's not doing that, reel it in and check it because there's a good chance you have a tangle or you snag some weeds or something like that. And uh, like I say, you can troll them around 
until you catch one, then you can cast and retrieve. But I got a trick for you people on how to find these fish. What's the secret? This totally works. <laughs> now, we often run around on the bay and we follow the birds, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, you don't normally see the birds on the cutlass fish. You know what you do see? The osprey. Really? Yes. Osprey love eating these fish. And last summer when we were fishing them, I can't tell you how many times we watched osprey crash down, come up, <laughs> trailing this cutlass fish, and then fly back to shore. In fact, so many were doing it that at any given time around us, there'd be five or six osprey hunting. So a good amount of them, huh? Yep. And you'd see one fly back to shore and you'd see one fly out after he finished his meal to come get another. So when you see three, four osprey up high circling in an area, you know. and then one dives, yeah, that's, and that is how I was picking my spots. They were, uh, all the last summer, they were kind of scattered out from the mouth of the south down to the mouth of the west, that open area from Thomas Point to Franklin mm -hmm. Manor. And pinning down their exact location, honestly, was pretty darn easy because we would just go out. we go, okay, there are three osprey right there. We'd run over there, slow down, put out the line, start trolling. Usually it didn't take more than a couple minutes. You get one on, shift into neutral, and start casting around. Very, very effective. So look for those osprey. That's a great tip. Now, I see a pattern here with the colors. Do you just want some bright and shiny, or is there a specific color you will say, this works the best? Shiny is great. I found silver and uh, pearlescent mm -hmm. uh, they really liked. Uh, we did throw some gold spoons at times. We did well with those. Um, once you're stopped and you start casting and retrieving, spoons are another good option. Uh, just, you know, three inch long, one ounce spoons. Right. Uh, actually, we would, we would go to those quite a bit during the slow periods when they weren't up top. You could sometimes see them attacking bait up top. Uh, but when they were kind of sitting down there on the bottom, and we saw them on the meter, they make a funny kind of a mark on mine. It's a really thin V, mm -hmm. but they make it. And you could see you were around them. Uh, in that scenario, when they were down low, we were throwing out the spoons and then kind of bouncing them along the bottom, and that worked well. Uh, the other common denominator between these all that we're talking about is their toothproof. Exactly. Right? You, got, you got hard plastic, you got metal. Um, that, that stands up to those teeth. The soft plastic, you don't have a prayer. We're going to be gone soon, right? Very quickly. Do they often cut you off? Like, you know, we're talking about like bluefish. Do you need like some sort of wire leader? I know that's the first thing everybody's going to ask when they talk about some with teeth, right? You, you do not. And I believe the reason is because they come up, their, their mouths are relatively <clears throat> small. They come up and they just try and bite stuff in half. Kind of like a mackerel feeds. Right. Right? So if you're throwing this kind of stuff for mackerel, you wouldn't really need a leader because they're not likely to get those teeth beyond... The hard part right uh same kind of deal in fact i don't i don't believe i ever got cut off uh last summer certainly not with the plugs and their mouths are not big enough to eat the whole thing an entire right? fish this big <laughs> right they couldn't do it um they're trying to bite in half which of course is why you end up with this right <laughs> that's awesome so i mean once again guys it's a new thing cool fish will get off the bucket list and like lenny mentioned they taste great they're fantastic they're absolutely fantastic. They look kind of weird, but I mean, you were telling me about it, how. It's awesome. Quick little that tip. flavor. Quick, quick little tip. Mm -hmm. Take your filet, lay it out, make up some crab imperial, slather it along the filet, <laughs> roll it into a pinwheel, stick a toothpick through it, pop it in the oven for 20 minutes, put a little imperial topping on there. Oh, man. man you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lenny. So. Uh, great info from, uh, you know, Lenny uh, talking about this cutlass fish. Great new opportunity we have here for, you know, light tackle fishing in the region. And remember, uh, we got our sales event uh, pretty much coming on the 13th. There are going to be videos coming out every day starting April 6th. There's going to be two dropping every day. Uh, and then, of course, go to our website to check out our full details on the actual sales. But quick things, 15% off for Hudson Reels. That's going to be awesome. Uh, you get an extra 10% off if you trade in a combo rod and or reel, uh, you know, some old you got laying around. So that would be an awesome addition to already discounted tackle. And <clears throat> besides that, uh, make sure you stop by and check things out. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys later.